why are conservatives doing what they're doing? Because to this day, I still consider myself a Goldwater conservative on many issues. Uh, that, of course, today pl places me, as it does the senator, well left of center. The senator once said during the 64 campaign uh, that history might, would likely look back on him as a liberal. And I think he was prescient. I think it's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, the, the right has gone so far and so hard to the right that it indeed uh, uh, makes him look highly moderate to liberal on countless issues. I mean, his position on gays in the military, which he was, didn't shy away from when Clinton was trying to resolve that problem. Uh, he didn't care. He said, I don't care. Uh, you know, about their sexual orientation. Uh, he said the question is uh, not whether they're straight or not, it's whether they can shoot straight. Uh, <laughs> and he said that's the criteria we want for soldiers. The title of the book, uh, Conservatives Without Conscience, came from uh, one of our conversations where he literally said to me, he said, John, I think, I think conservatives have lost their conscience. It's clearly a play on his classic book, uh, The Conscience of a Conservative. Uh, it's a uh, uh, it, it's a big issue uh, how conservatives think, and he said they just don't think anymore is the biggest problem. Uh, a few of them just have their opinions, and you either believe them and buy them or you don't. And he said, I don't think this is the way it should work. And these were some of the keys that started me doing research where I ended up finding a body of science I didn't even know existed. Uh, in the aftermath of World War II, uh, up in Berkeley, a group of social scientists looked at the question, could what happened in Nazi Germany ever happen in the United States? Would Americans, any part of America, ever be like the good German and tolerate, say, a Holocaust or a Hitler? Uh, would they sit back and let that happen? Uh, after many years of study, the, the group uh, in the early 50s published a book called The Authoritarian Personality. The book uh, laid out based on Freudian psychology that indeed there was evidence that there were people who uh, would very easily follow an authoritarian leader. Uh, the book was, has never been proven wrong, and we now have a half, a half century, literally, of data, hard empirical evidence where Tens upon tens of thousands of people have been questioned anonymously uh, and tested for their authoritarian uh, disposition. And it's very telling that clearly there is an authoritarian personality. Uh, what are, what's in, very interesting is not all conservatives are authoritarians, but all highly scoring authoritarians tend to be highly conservative. They are people who submit very quickly to the authoritarian leader uh, whose beliefs have attracted their attention. They don't want to hear any counter-arguments once they buy into it. They don't want to think a lot about it, but they want to understand that leader's worldview and, and, and then become very aggressive in trying to sell it to others. They tend to be very religious people. They are people who are, uh, they are both men and women. They also, uh, sadly, are bullies. They, people who are in the out group, uh, they can tend to be very abusive about. They pick on weaker people. Homosexuals is a very typical group they will go after because they don't think they fit into their worldview. Uh, and th they exist. And as I say, we now have uh, the first 40 years of this work focused on these people who they call right-wing authoritarians. Uh, they're actually a, a more descriptive title is right-wing authoritarian followers. In the last decade plus, uh, social scientists have also looked at who are the authoritarian leaders. They are social dominators is what they, they are people who, they are 99 percent men. They are people who jump out in front and say, follow me, I've got all the answers and, and, and let's go. They are people who are uh, typically amoral. They may or may not be religious. Uh, they, uh, they are highly Machiavellian. They will take a, a leader in front of them and pretend to be uh, submissive to that leader so long as they can get in and learn how to cut him off at the knees and get the leadership post themselves. 
Uh, they are bullies also. They, uh, there is only one view, and it's the view they have settled on to, to, uh, to use to dominate whatever organization or group they're trying to do so. Interestingly also, there's a third group, and uh, these have only emerged in the last few years of testing, uh, and they are, they are the people who would become my conservatives without conscience. Uh, they are people who are social dominators who have also been given uh, tests where they score high as right-wing followers, and this is an anomaly. Well, how can they be both leaders and followers. It just made no sense. So they began examining it, and what they found is that the people who have these double high scores are people who see themselves running the world, so when they ans answer the questions as uh, to following a, a, an authoritarian leader, they're answering them as if they were the leader, and <laughs> they want people to sub be submissive, they want them to be bullies, they want them to be aggressive, and so you have all, you have this rather unique category. Uh, a, 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 a prototypical uh, real-world example uh, would be somebody like a Hitler, is a classic double high. Uh, just to complete this science, because it was so fascinating and it began answering so many questions, they don't find that there are people who are left-wing authoritarians, uh, which explains a lot about Republicans versus Democrats, if you will. And, and again, I say this, not in, it, this isn't pejorative, it's descriptive, and it's based, the labels I'm, and descriptions I'm giving aren't some tags that social scientists have put on these people, but rather it's the way they describe themselves. Uh, and when they try to test for the left, uh, they, they, just, they just don't, they're just not terribly authoritarian uh, in being followers or even as social dominators. Uh, leadership doesn't mean social domination. Uh, by any stretch of the imagination. I, when I first began thinking about this, it was clear since the, uh, when I looked at the conservative movement and how it had evolved based on material that uh, I found in the senator's files and my own knowledge of the movement, uh, I suddenly recognized an awful lot of authoritarian followers. In fact, I got a hold of the leading researcher in the field and he was gracious enough to help me out because I had been reading uh, all of his published works as well, his books, uh, as well as a number of his professional journal articles, and this stuff is, w was not written for uh, the general reader. It's written for other academics, social uh, other professional peers, uh, but I was so fascinated with it and I got a call of him and I said to him, his name was Bob Altmer, I said, you know, Bob, I, <laughs> I recognize uh, now that I've sorted through all this material of yours, uh, these are the people I was working with in the Nixon White House for the first, first thing, uh, and I can tell you, you know, I knew these people well, and I know other people in the conservative movement very well, and I understand their personality. Is it legitimate to indeed take these, these traits that you have found in testing and say, if I say, see that in a consistent pattern in people, that indeed you can say that person fits that description is in is an authoritarian personality. He said, yes, he said, it, it's, uh, it's not like, uh, quite like doing psychoanalysis from uh, reading a biography and it's not psychobabble, it is that there is clearly uh, these traits, if they dominate a personality you know, <coughs> indeed there's nothing illegitimate and, and improper in identifying that person as being an authoritarian. It's, it's in fact, I would do it if I had that kind of knowledge. I don't have that kind of knowledge, uh, notwithstanding the fact I, uh, I'm an American, he was, he is actually up in Canada, he was a Yale trained, uh, then Carnegie Mellon PhD, who went up there because of his freedom to do a lot of research, and he has probably the leading data bank, and his work has been corroborated and replicated by uh, literally hundreds of other social scientists. So, uh, I, was, I was very fortunate, in fact, uh, just for your further information, if you get interested in this subject, uh, I kept prodding him to say to him, Bob, you know, I could, just in my emails I could tell uh, that he's very witty, he's very, uh, he writes well, and I said, you need to take this information that you've written for all your professional peers and do something for the general reader. Uh, and indeed he's done that, and he's put it online free. 
Uh, it's on, just Google uh, the authoritarians and the name Altmeyer, A-L-T-M-E-Y-E-R. And you, I've had some complaints in, in, in giving this name out uh, and this Google uh, suggestion out because got a mail from more than one person said, you kept me up all night uh, <laughs> looking at this material. Uh, this explained so much to me about current and contemporary Republican politics. It answered questions. It made me understand why they act the way they do, uh, what's happened to the incivility, uh, and it was, uh, the light bulb just went off. I just wish the senator had been around to see that data because I think it would have explained a lot to him as well.